greetings to all my friends at Rhodes and friends and family at Rhodes. I'm hoping that you're having a good day and have had a good week and you are bearing well under this these trying conditions. None of us know exactly what the future is going to bring as far as whether things are going to get worse or better, how much this is going to personally affect each and every one of us. It behooves us to try to maintain maintain as much normalcy as we can <clears throat> and to remember uh, let the good shine through and not be pessimistic and not be impatient and grumpy and all those things that we have been teaching through Christianity forever and ever. Today's scripture comes to us from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him.
Good morning, my friends. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about change and doing the Lord's work. Well, today we're going to talk about our gifts that the Lord gives us and how we can use those gifts to do his work. He tells us not to go shyly, but to go boldly and speak his name throughout the earth. Have no fear for he protects us in all things. We are God's children. We are called to do his work and we must do so with the glory and the grace and love that he gives us for others. For if we don't love our neighbor as we love ourselves, we can never preach the word of God correctly. Can we pray? Heavenly and most gracious Father, thank you for the gifts you have given us. Thank you for the love that you bestow on us. And thank you for the gifts you give us to do your work. These things we ask in thy name. Amen.
our psalm for today is Psalm 92, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 16. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Proclaim me your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, and they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him.
scripture for today is from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Sociologists might define religion as a system of beliefs that people accept as truth and are therefore willing to live by those beliefs. Human beings are inherently religion. Even a proclaimed atheist will worship something, be it money or fame, power, knowledge, or possessions. It is what I call the golden calf syndrome. You leave a family of people together long enough without meeting their spiritual needs, and they will create something to worship. When a person goes shopping for faith, as they often do, be it some form of Christianity like Methodism, Baptist, Presbyterian, Buddhist, Hinduism, Taoism, etc., they usually remark that, well, it just fe feels right when they can agree on its teachings on an intellectual level, <clears throat> or sometimes an emotional level. <clears throat> we, as Christians, need to ask, why are we Christians? Why are we Christians? We're, we're deeply rooted in the uh, traditions of the church, but why, why? Indeed, why does Christianity exist? Why couldn't the Jewish tradition, which we speak so much of, why couldn't it lead us to where we are today? The Old Testament scripture we read this morning shows us that the teachings of Jesus already existed before his birth. He taught us many things while he walked on the earth. But it may shock you to surprise you to be told that this was not what he came for. So why are we Christians? You might have a quick pat answer that goes something like, well, God is love, and Christ was the ultimate expression of that love, and, and you would be right. <clears throat> How many Christians, <clears throat> however, many Christians have a flower child perspective of Christianity, where Christianity is loving people, living together in harmony, and sharing everything with everyone else. While Christianity would encourage this kind of existence, that is not what Christianity is. So let's get radical. When someone uses the term radical today, it conjures up memories of the 70s with protest marches, sit-ins, flag-burning ceremonies, uncontrolled behavior. But the English word radical comes from the Latin word for root, which, from which we get the word radius, which means to measure from the center radish it's a root we eat and the algebraic term radical <clears throat> it has to do with what is at the center what is the core of that thing which we speak <clears throat> so paul was a radical eyewitnesses to christ's ministry death and resurrection knew christianity was more than another religion knew that the truths revealed by christ demanded that they follow him John chapter 6, verses 60 through 69. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe, and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you no one can come with me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. 
Know ye the truth, and the truth shall set you free. <clears throat> but in the years and generations that followed, <clears throat> eyewitnesses were not around to nurture this kind of faith. <clears throat> Paul found himself in the first century of the early church dealing with people who had not chosen to follow Christ, but joined the Christian movement for a variety of reasons. Some were good, some selfish, and some superficial. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. I am astonished that you are quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Paul, time and time again, argued and pleaded with his churches to get back to the basics, get back to the root. The root of Christianity is not the golden rule. As we read in Leviticus 19.18, we received it centuries before. <clears throat> I was not saying, I'm not saying that the teachings are false, but that we did not need Christ to teach us this. They are not the roots, but the branches. <clears throat> The root of Christianity is resurrection. <clears throat> For Paul, what Christ accomplished on the cross and his resurrection was everything. He called it the Christ event. Notice in 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to teach and preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be robbed of its power. Paul wrote for the integrity of the faith. He wrote almost nothing about what Jesus said. At that time, the teachings of Jesus were well known by the church, even though the Gospels had not even been written yet. Just as most of us know the good portion of Jesus' teachings, without the resurrection, Christianity is just another religion. We should not believe the resurrection because we find the teachings of Christ to make sense. Rather, we follow the teachings of Christ because we believe in his resurrection. Christianity, for them, is a philosophy of living a good life. Having a philosophy of life is not a level of faith at all. This is the level to which most Christians get stuck. The only way we can reach the next level of faith is to get radical, to believe what does not make sense. We've heard the teachings of Jesus so often as we grew up that 
we think it makes sense when it does not. <clears throat> he said, love your enemies. And we hear that so much that we think it makes sense, but it does not. We rationalize by believing that if we love our enemies, he will become our friend. And that's wonderful. And it happens and it can happen. But this is a deception. We are to love our enemy because Christ told us to. As simple as that. If a single enemy never turns into a friend, then intellectually the teaching of Christianity are a failure. But we cannot intellectualize Christianity. We must get back to the basics. We must get back to the roots of our faith. And to do that, we must believe in the Christ event, in the resurrection in the resurrected Lord, not because we understand, but because we know in whom we believe. We can know it is possible. And when we do, we will be taking our first steps into a new and powerful level of faith. Dear Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives that guide us through the murky waters that confuse us and misdirect us and cause us to lose sight of the precious goal that is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Help us to know right from wrong and help us to learn how to love one another in new ways and powerful ways that expand the possibilities of human fellowship. In Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you.